up here on the second chain, working all this area around the islands out there, all the shell, everything, the shoreline here, Rattlesnake Point, that shoreline there, all the way over to Ayers Island, all this area in here. Shoreline, man, we've had, you know, a little bit of break in our weather. It's not quite as warm as it has been for the last several weeks, so it was pretty nice to be out there, especially the last couple of days. We had some pretty decent weather early. Water temps were just down just a hair, but definitely a noticeable difference in that. You know, definitely when you're starting the day off from 89 degrees to 85 degrees, you don't think four degrees is a big deal, but it, it, it really is. Fish notice that. That makes them a little bit more active, a little bit more ready to go, ready to something to eat. You know, we're here on this uh, new moon phase right now, so take advantage of that if you can. Hopefully your Labor Day weekend was outstanding and you're enjoying that and had a fun time. But all this area here on the Ayers Reef, this can, all this up here in Ayers, you know, we spend a lot of time up here in Ayers on the reefs, on the edges, around the islands, working the shorelines, uh, all the back up here on the point, Ayers Point, this particular shoreline, all the way down into here. Not seeing quite as much grass as we'd like to see, so it's hopefully that would, uh, with the, you know, with cedar being opened up here now for going on almost three years, uh, we would see that grass come back once upon a time. The shoreline up here on Ayers was, was spectacular. We just have not gotten back to that point yet, but hopefully that will continue to uh, flourish and get better and better as the days and weeks and years go by. But that said, like I say, we're still fishing shale early. Like I say, we've got a little small break in the weather in the morning hours. You know, we fished a little bit later in the mornings to just like pushed it out to about 11, 11.30. Still having the water temps below 90, so that's been a, a, a nice, noticeable change. So if you've been on the water in the last, in this past week, especially when we got the little bit cooler air and, and the rain that we've had in the area, it's, it's helped. It's helped a lot. It's helped with the bite, helped with, obviously, with the weather conditions. So water conditions have been good. Low winds in the morning. We haven't had a significant amount of wind until maybe, I say significant, you know, it's starting out at five miles an hour and maybe get up to 10 to 12, which is still very good. Was my favorite's 15. 10 to 15 so that's all in that in that uh time frame there as far as what you what you need as far as wind goes has been good so we've taken advantage of that found uh, some some quality trout uh, a lot in the upper slot some in the over slot so it's been very good now there wasn't great great numbers of those but the ones that we found you know it offsets that so it's really good to have that and then of course Scattered redfish here and there, but, you know, the one thing that we're starting to notice with our redfish is they're starting to kind of school up, starting to see little pods here and there, starting to see groupings, a little bit different locations. So they're kind of starting to do that. And that's what happens here at the end of August, heading into the 1st of September. Those fish will start to school up redfish-wise. We'll spend, you know, we've had some water come back into our system, so that's been helpful. It's kind of a little shot in the arm in the water system in, the, in all these estuaries. It's been helpful. So it opens up some of these back lakes more so than what we've had. And so with that, that's where you can start locating some of these fish. You know, you fish these shorelines, you'll see that. Some of these little thicker areas, it's got little coves in there. You may locate some fish that are hanging in there. Just kind of, again, you have to just kind of scout and kind of look and kind of see what's going on. And you'll start to see that thing, especially as we start to move. So now that we're here at the first part of September, and we'll start to move forward. You know, we've got... Uh, uh, weather patterns that are starting to be a little bit more favorable for us, and we'll see if that continues to hold. But uh, if so, then you'll start to see these schools a little bit better and a little bit more wise uh, moving around. So anyhow, uh, you know, we were in our transition days as we started up this past week, and we've gotten into those, we've gotten into the, the new new moon phase, and those that five days that lead up to it to the five days after, and that'll be the continuing trend of this upcoming week. Uh, like I say, if you can get out there to be a part of that, whether it be on this Labor Day weekend or even a couple of days after that, after the holiday, then that's so be it, then good, good for you. Uh, but so, so take advantage. So we've been throwing, you know, our big baits. It doesn't really matter. Topwater action's been pretty good. It hasn't been spectacular yet. That's coming. Uh, as we, we slide into uh, September a little bit deeper and we get into October, the, the topwater bite will be phenomenal, or it should be anyway. Uh, but, uh, but we've had good action with that and caught some quality fish with our topwater action. So if you're a topwater junkie or like to throw it, keep, a, keep one tied on on the boat and get ready to throw it at just different particular times. Um, primarily, we've been throwing the, uh, you know, 
the six inch, the five inch, you know, multiple different flavors of down south. You know, the big smooth, the supermodel, the original, threw even a little burner shad when our bite kind of died off in the morning time after we got past the major or the minor, then we'd put that burner shad on there or the little John and see if we couldn't create that bite to last just a little bit longer. And, and, it, and it did, and there was at times where it held for us and did pretty good. It wasn't as consistent as what I'd like to have seen, but we got a decent amount of production out of it. But anyhow, uh, you know, the knock and tail, the uh, double D, again, of course, the topwater bait, then all four sizes in the down south, all were good. The uh, provoker in the, in the uh, mirror lure. So all the bigger baits uh, were very productive for us. Even the original size stuff, four inch stuff was good. So like I say, when you get close into that new moon phase, you have a lot of options that you can do. So that's why I always suggest when you get into the new moon phase, have different sizes, profile, colors, and everything. Water clarity has been very good for us. We've been that nice trout green water in certain areas, some places a little stained, but it's been very good no matter what. Still using the 16th ounce jig head, working those areas, working the uh, shallower grass flats and, and hard packed sand areas off some shell has been productive for us. And then, of course, again, as we've talked about in the weeks past, as that sun begins to get up there and we're, now we've kind of backed off just a little bit. Before it was 9, 30, 10. Now we've kind of backed up an hour and got into that 11 o'clock hour and start fishing that just a tad bit deeper water, start fishing in three to five foot and, and, and locating some fish that are hanging off in those areas. Redfish, again, they're up shallow. They're, they're working these flats, working these edges. Uh, just continue to work those, get in some of the back lake areas, and you'll start to see some of those, maybe some find you some pods, which you can maybe some sight cast. And that's really where you'll have fun with the topwater action is back in those types of areas. So, again, majors and minors have been a major thing for us. We've got to get influx of water that's been good for us. So we will see uh, how our upcoming week will uh, trend for us. Allen's Bite all the way down St. Joe shoreline, all the way up to Paul's Mott area. All these different little areas, you got little nooks, little crannies, little mouse that dump back into the back lake areas. You can dump back into these things. we come around to this area here. You know, you got the hard packed sand, you got a little scattered shell in these areas. This whole shoreline, we found and located fish up and down that shoreline, at just different points and times of our morning, maybe early afternoon. The thing that you'll notice, you know, again, with the influx of water that we've had, and it's been better, it's able to, and it opened up some of the back lake areas to get into some of those. So you can, you can either, A, you can run your boat back up in there if you've got the right kind of boat to do that. If not, just leave it out front and just kind of walk yourself back in there to it. And this is where I've been throwing our topwater baits and having decent success with that. You know, getting blow ups, getting some swirls, getting some takes. Uh, it's not consistent, but it's still fun. You know, I'll take... I'll take one blow up or one take and throw another 150, 200 times before I stop throwing it or something like that. Or for every blow up I get like that, that continues on with that process. So, you know, it's a patience game. Uh, you got to really stick to the top water game to really get the best out of it and benefit benefit from it. So don't get impatient with it because it, it is fun. Uh, if you've thrown top waters or enjoyed throwing top waters, you know what I'm talking about. But, you know, throwing the plastics working these edges, working all this shoreline here. We found trout up and down the shoreline. We found scattered redfish, the occasional flounder here or there, but that's really not what I'm targeting or what we're doing. It's just trout and redfish are the main things that we're looking for and trying to find. We get back up in the bite, up into here, work these shorelines here. And of course you got a nice big back lake that runs to it and you got deeper edges that run back into here. So we've worked all these different areas at different points in times during this past week. And, you know, spend a little bit of time back on it and see if we can't locate. And that's where we've kind of found some scattered redfish. Uh, and you will eventually, if you continue to fish this based on your water levels and stuff back in here, you'll start to see those redfish that start schooling up. That's why I always suggest for you this time of year moving forward, especially when we get closer to October and early November, is keep that top water tied on, man, because it's a spectacular time when you can start getting them to eat like that. But that said, we, you know, primarily 16th ounce jig heads throwing the the supermodel, throwing the uh, big smooth, throwing the original size in the down south, and the particular colors, are, uh, you know, the white ice and bone diamond have been consistent for us for a while now. We've been throwing those. Uh, watermelon red's been good, Big Papa. Twisted tea's been good for us and all the flavors. Uh, so any of those have been good. And the knock and tail, primarily the greenbacks and the, and the uh, heavy metal have been very good for us. Working those, uh, the burner shad, it's been, the, again, the white ice, the twisted tea, 
Bone Diamond, uh, Firecracker, big the uh, Mud Minnow, if you can find it. I have not been able to find those. I still have a couple left in my box. But if you find some Mud Minnow, keep those handy because they're, they're very good as well. Uh, the Mirror Lure Little Johns, it's been the the uh, golden red glitter watermelon red has been very good for us in that size and of course been the same with the uh, provoker and primarily in the pearl for it and of course the double d has been good in different uh varieties of flavor there not one particular one has stood out but that's when we kind of go that double d later in the morning and try to bang down on some of those deeper grass beds and work in that and see if we can't find a little better quality trout and it's worked out sometimes not every time but uh, it's something to have in your box just to have to be able to tie on there in a particular time of the day. Uh, primarily, the, uh, the miners have been pretty good for us. You know, we've had these midday majors, primarily, and that's going to move. Of course, your miner's going to creep up here in the next couple of days. It'll be uh, early morning. I say early morning. It's going to be around, you know, 7-ish to 10 o'clock in that time frame. It'll be good. And that'll move every day. If you keep up with it, you know what I'm talking about. So just keep an eye on that and, and work that into your fishing day. Say I think uh, I think our our quote unquote fall of the year is going to be pretty spectacular for us. We're going to have some opportunities to catch some quality fish moving uh, into the fall of the year. Newcomb, you know, we were here not too long ago. I think a couple of weeks ago we spent some time out here. The report was on this, so we went back to it and it it produced pretty well for us. You know, if you fish this shoreline and wading it wise. You know the structure in the bottom that's here, it's really good, especially, I mean, it's when you got warmer weather, we've had a super low wind, so it sets up really good for us. You've got guts in there, you've got shallow grass beds, you've got deeper grass beds, you've got some scattered shell in there, you've got guts, cuts. Everything you really want for this time of year is in that. And so, And then, of course, you've got plenty of bait working on the shoreline as well. So everything sets up for us pretty well for us to have, you know, a pretty good morning for the most part. Uh, the couple, I think, a couple of different times that we fished it, it was not super, super productive, but it was it was solid. You know, we'd catch fish along the way, a lot of smaller ones in that, uh, you know, 14, 16, 15, 13 and a half ish, a lot of those. And then, of course, you'd catch eight or ten of those, and then you pull out a quality fish, you know, an upper slot or or even in the restricted slot now that 20 plus. So it gave you opportunities. Scattered redfish up on the shoreline. Again, that's, you know, we're throwing our top water up in there shallow like that and getting some opportunities, throwing our plastics out a little bit deeper, working the grass beds and edges. You know, come around the point, work all that on here in the old lap reef that's out there. And, you know, it's not pretty much not there anymore. It's just deeper in there just because of time and tides and Harvey and just other things that's gone on to it. It's pretty well disappeared, but it's a little bit deeper. So you can drift it if you want to. But there are a couple of the, the reefs that are out there that with the tide being lower, you can get off on those and fish those edges. Then come on around into the bend area. Again, uh, back here, if you get one of those high wind days, you got a good south, southeast breeze is kicking this up back side of Newcomb and really sets up well for you because you can fish this whole shoreline all the way toward Holiday Beach. You got several little mouths that, that come out into the Newcomb bend area that dump out into Copano. You can fish up in those. A little squishy, but you got scattered shell that's on those corners that back up in there. So those redfish will get back in there. Even some quality fish, trout will get back in there as well. So you can just work up and down this all the way up there to, uh, like I say, Holiday Beach area and just kind of take your time with that and just see what's going on. Uh, you know, there hadn't been a tremendous amount of fish that's holding there, but you get opportunities from that. Now, once you kind of work this and if you spent two or three hours or more and come on around, Come up here to Shell Point area, and this little shoreline right here, it's not super long, and it comes up here into this little point, but you got another area that's hard packed. you got some scattered grass in there, and that's where we've, we've uh, fortunate enough, we've, we've pulled off a couple of flounder off of that little shoreline. There's a lot of sand that's on it, so it kind of opens yourself up to give you that opportunity. On the particular day that we did fish that, we were fortunate enough to pull out one or two. Uh, scattered trout. I don't think we caught any redfish that were off that, but just another area to add to your repertoire of locations up here in Copano. Again, the same things, same baits we're throwing, throwing top waters, throwing the, the all four versions of the down south and the big smooth, uh, the uh, supermodel, the original size, and the burner shad, and the same flavors that I mentioned in the last video. Just put all those different ones in your box uh, and just have, you may want to have you a, a, a hard hardback or a hard-cased uh, 
baits and then your soft baits and uh, carry those with you so you have a variety. Like I say, we're still in the prime time of the new moon phase. It's going to be here for the next four or five days, so you can take advantage of that. And then we'll, as we get into the latter part of the week, uh, heading toward the weekend, that's when we'll get back into the transition days of that new moon going to a full moon. So uh, your profile sizes will change during that time frame. So you just this is the time of year where it just really starts to get really good for people that throw artificials. So if you're if you that's what you like to do and you like to fish these, so you know buckle up and get ready for the next 60 days. It's gonna get it's probably gonna get really really good. Of course, we'll keep an eye on weather patterns on top of that because that's uh, always gonna change things for us as well as we have a it looks like a little system that may be that may try to develop into something that's down there in the top of South America and move in this direction, but we shall see. That will reveal itself over the next six to eight days, so we'll see what happens with that. But until something really uh, happens as far as development goes, we're not going to see too much out of that. You may see some pop-ups with the heat in the area like that, but that helps kind of keep us cool down. As I could say earlier with the water temps being better over the weekend, it was really nice. So anyhow, work these areas comfortably, work them patiently, uh, take your time with it. And of course, if you've got other areas that set up the same way, uh, then you can kind of trend that pattern over to those particular areas as well. And, and then uh, you can uh, continue on with your catching day.